Hello again. Um, this week, I'm going to attempt to fill a what I perceive as a knowledge hole. The blood supply to the stomach is important. It is a little complicated, and where those arteries come from and how they branch is a little complicated. So we're going to look at the blood supply to the stomach, and we're going to look at that, that, that network of blood vessels and how they get there. And because they also go to the duodenum, we're going to look at the blood supply to the duodenum as well, okay? That's the aim. The reason I perceive this as a knowledge hole is because um, when I'm marking exam papers, I find the students either know almost nothing about this or they're very, very good at it. Um, probably because it's complex and takes quite a bit of time to look at. So let's do it now. The blood supply to the stomach. Okay, first things first then. Um, here's the GI tract. You know that the aorta is the big artery that's descending through the thorax and through the abdomen and supplying blood to stuff. The aorta in the abdomen has three anterior branches. You know them as the celiac trunk, superior mesenteric artery, and inferior mesenteric artery. And we often talk about the blood supply of these arteries as being to regions of the GI tract um, associated with parts of the embryo. So we talk about foregut, midgut, and hindgut. And the foregut is supplied with blood by branches of the celiac trunk. The midgut is supplied with blood by branches of the superior mesenteric artery and the hindgut is supplied, but those structures are supplied with blood um, by branches of the inferior mesenteric artery, all right? So, um, the interesting thing when we talk about the stomach and the duodenum is that the, the, the esophagus and the stomach and the half of the duodenum-ish is supplied with blood by branches of the celiac trunk. So, when we're talking about the blood supply to the stomach, those arteries are going to be derived from the celiac trunk. So we'll look at the celiac trunk and its branches. Now, as we go down the duodenum, where the bile duct enters the duodenum, that's the point at which we consider the foregut becomes midgut. So part of the duodenum is supplied with blood by arteries of the celiac trunk, so we'll follow those, and the rest of the duodenum is supplied with blood by branches of the superior mesenteric artery, but we'll see how those actually overlap, right? And that's important because that's where some of the arteries to the stomach come from. The arteries to the stomach come from the celiac trunk, but there's some over... You'll see, you'll see as we go, right? First of all then, I reckon we should look at the arteries of the stomach, and then we'll look at where they've come from, add the duodenum on, talk about some clinical stuff, okay? So the stomach then, this is the esophagus coming into the stomach, this is the duodenum coming out of the stomach, this is the stomach. And the stomach has a lesser curvature and a greater curvature here, right? And on the lesser curvature, if I turn this around, so this is the posterior stomach, anterior stomach, if I tilt it like that, or there's an artery here. Actually, I should keep it this way around so it makes sense, right? This is my left side, this is my right side. Um, there is a, a left gastric artery here, and there's a right gastric artery here. So the left and right gastric arteries are supplying blood to the lesser curvature of the stomach, and they're running together. They're like a single blood vessel, right? And then on the greater curvature, we can see we also have um, what looks like a single blood vessel running all the way around the greater curvature. In fact, it's two blood vessels from two different origins. And these are the gastroomental or gastroepiploic arteries. So we have a left and a right gastroomental or gastroepiploic artery. Now, from the greater curvature of the stomach, we have the greater omentum hanging down. So you might think gastroomental because of that, gastroepiploic. Um, the lesser omentums over this side, so that confuses things a little bit, but whatever. So those are the arteries of the, of the stomach. We also have a posterior gastric artery and some short gastric arteries. So where do these main four arteries come from? Well, let's, let's disembowel this model first so we can look at this stuff. Intestines. So that's the greater omentum. 
that was the stomach there, stomach greater omentum. Right, so this is what I was talking about. Here's the, the abdominal aorta down here, celiac trunk, superior mesenteric artery, and inferior mesenteric artery. Now, if we had, had a little bit of this back, this model, oh, blimey, it's been banged already. This model is a little bit special. This is the only model I think I could find. We had a left gastric artery. But from the celiac trunk, we have three branches. We have this splenic artery here. Here's the spleen, here's the pancreas. So the splenic artery is running out to the spleen. We have um, a common hepatic artery. So the liver is up here and the liver receives blood through a hepatic artery as well as through the portal vein. So we have this common hepatic artery going off this away. And then we have the left gastric artery. Those are the three branches of the celiac trunk. So if we put the stomach back here, like that, that left gastric artery is looping up here, and we can see it entering the stomach there and then running down into the left curvature, the lesser curvature of the stomach, all right? Now, the splenic artery, I've got another model. If we look at this one, right, pancreas, spleen, Pancreas spleen. There's the duodenum coming around here. Here's the pancreas. And there's the spleen. Now the splenic artery, can you see the splenic artery is running along? So this is the celiac trunk. There's the left gastric artery. There's the common hepatic artery going out this way. So that's the celiac trunk and its three branches. The splenic artery then is running along the length of the pancreas and running out to the spleen. Now the, the spleen is posterior to the stomach. So as the splenic artery runs, it gives off, I haven't got it on there or on here, but it gives off a posterior gastric artery that's gonna wend its way around and supply the posterior wall of the stomach, right? So there's that posterior gastric artery. Now, as the splenic artery gets out towards the spleen, once it's almost at the spleen, it gives off a bunch of little short branches, and those little short branches are the short gastric arteries. Um, so they're, all right, so they're coming from here. If I stick the stomach back, yeah, so they're, they're supplying this end of the stomach, kind of right past the body and the fundus. And the big one is that uh, the, the left gastroamental artery, which is running around here, comes off the splenic artery. So as the splenic artery is almost at the spleen, it gives off the left gastroamental artery, or left gastroepiploic artery, which then runs around the greater curvature of the stomach there. Okay, so that's where the left gastric artery comes from. That comes from the celiac trunk. Posterior and short gastric arteries come from the splenic artery. Left gastromental artery also comes from the splenic artery. All right, can you hear the rain pattering outside? It's been belting it down all day. And you'll hear students studying as well. Right, um, so that's one side. Now the other side's a bit harder to show, so put your imagination hat on. But this branch here, as I said, this is the common hepatic artery. So that's gonna go up to the liver. Um, it's gonna become the hepatic artery proper and get to the liver and split um, two ways. We talked about the liver. So the, um, the liver receives blood from the GI tract through the portal vein, but that's blood that it's gonna process, the stuff that it's gonna, blood that it's gonna do stuff with. The hepatic artery proper is supplying blood to the liver, you know, to sustain the liver. It's got oxygen and stuff in it, right? Um, so that's, imagine that, that's going to go up here to the liver. Now, as it's on its way, it gives off a gastroduodenal branch. So you can guess where that goes to. It's going to go to the gastro and the duodenal. It's going to go to the stomach and the duodenum. So here's the duodenum here, here's the pancreas, and the stomach sits there. So the gastroduodenal artery is running... Whoa, right, posterior to like that pyloric region of the stomach there. And around there is, is the duodenum. So that's gonna, that's gonna run down here. Now here it's been cut away, but on this model, see why I'm using multiple models, on this model, it's, it's, it's largely there. So, so we've got this gastroduodenal artery running around there. Now, what happens to the gastroduodenal artery? Well, 
the gastroduodenal artery is going to split into, I reckon this little knob here is the right gastroamental artery. So if we were to add that one, right? So do you see how uh, there's the stomach plumbed into the duodenum? That there is the right gastroamental artery, which puts it in the right place. Do you see? So then it runs around the greater curvature of the stomach. So the right gastroamental artery comes from the gastroduodenal artery. There's a bit more to it than that. This is the superior pancreaticoduodenal artery. One branch runs anterior to the pancreas and one branch runs posterior to the pancreas. So we have anterior superior pancreaticoduodenal artery and posterior superior pancreaticoduodenal artery. You might swap them around, it might be superior posterior and superior anterior. Whoa, what are our words? Terribly confusing, but hopefully you get my point. Obviously, if there's a superior pancreaticoduodenal artery, there must be an inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery. Um, and that's what we see here. So if, if, if this up here is the celiac trunk, then down here, this is the superior mesenteric artery, which is going to supply loads of branches to the small intestine, but it's also going to supply blood to the duodenum. So it sends this branch off around here. This is the inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery, and it's going to loop around and look at anastomoses. It meets, it is the same pretty much as the superior pancreaticoduodenal artery. Um, but again, the inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery branches into anterior and posterior pa inferior pancreaticoduodenal arteries, which meet the anterior and posterior superior pancreaticoduodenal arteries, which means we have this anastomosis, this link between the celiac trunk and the superior mesenteric artery through these arches. Often people wonder, well, which way is the blood flowing? Well, what's going on here is that if you have a curve, so if you've got if you've got the um, the greater amentum, sorry, the if you've got the um, the right gastroamental artery supplying blood from this direction and the left gastroamental artery supplying blood from this direction, the blood's flowing in both directions. And of course, we see the big vessel and we can see some of the smaller branches coming from it, and those are then going to capillaries, and the blood's flowing through those capillary beds into the venous side of things. Um, so the blood is flowing this way and through and across and out. So it is, it's flowing in, in both directions. So there's one artery left, isn't there, of the main four we, we introduced at the beginning. The, uh, the right gastric artery, which is running around the lesser curvature over here. Now, on this model, I can see it's, it's coming from here, right? So the right gastric artery is, is from there. So what happens is that that common hepatic artery gives off the gastroduodenal artery, which then gives off those other branches and does its thing. And the, the hepatic artery proper then continues on to the liver. And as it continues on to the liver, it then gives off the branch of the right gastric artery. So just up here, and also a supraduodenal artery, look, the, the duodenum's there. So it gives off a supraduodenal artery as well. So the right gastric artery essentially comes off the hepatic artery proper, but it's still coming from a branch of the celiac trunk. So we've done, we've seen where the left gastric artery comes from, the right gastric artery, the left gastromental artery, and the right gastromental artery. There's a lot there, isn't there? One other point then, remember that the, um, so we'll stay in there. Remember that the lesser omentum runs between the lesser curvature of the stomach and the liver, right? So these vessels that we're talking about over here, these hepatic vessels and, and these other ones going to the stomach, um, are likely to be found within that uh, lesser omentum, or certainly around there somewhere. All right, so why is all this important? Well, largely um, peptic ulcers, right? You know that peptic ulcers inside the stomach are a thing, and when peptic ulcers form, 
if, if left to their own devices, they will, um, the acid and what have you, will erode through the mucosa of the stomach and, and through the muscle. Now, where that happens is important because if it happens next to one of these big blood vessels, then it's going to cause erosion of that blood vessel and massive bleeding, which is very, very dangerous. So it's important for you to be able to recognize the anatomical location of the gastroamental and gastric arteries and what have you around the stomach and the location of a peptic ulcer um, as well. And um, peptic ulcers can also form the duodenal ulcers, I mean, peptic stomach, but you can also get ulcers in the duodenum, which then cause the same sorts of issues and have the risk of eroding these other blood vessels as well. So it is worth studying the blood supply, the arterial supply to the stomach and the duodenum. This is just a video on the internet. Ideally, you then want to be looking at these physical things or if you've got some of them clever computer-generated models, have a play with those. Get that 3D thing sorted inside your head because they'll make things a lot easier than me trying to get you to imagine things. Okay. Unlike other organs, um, the venous drainage of the stomach, while the peripheral blood vessels might be similar, they don't drain to the inferior vena cava, they drain to the portal vein, which then drains to the liver, which then drains to the inferior vena cava. But that's a whole other story for another day. All right, there we go, done. Arteries supplying the blood to the stomach. Hope that made some sort of sense. All right, see you guys uh, next week. <laughs>